Hello, I'm Odin, and today I'm going to continue making my full Mecha Godzilla cosplay. I'm making a complete suit, head to toe, based off the 1974 Mecha Godzilla. And this is the first part of the upper body or chest of Mecha Godzilla. So I got a little bit of work done before I actually started rolling the cameras. What I did is I got Felicia's help to create a pattern for my upper body. She did what's called a pattern drafting for sewing. So it's a very basic pattern of, of all of my upper body, including sleeves. And we use that to make a cardboard mock-up of what the undershell needed to be. So that's what I've got on now. This is a four millimeter what the foam vest tank top thing. And I'm gonna build up all the details that make Mechagodzilla's chest onto this piece. It's cut longer than I need because I can shorten it easy. And to get in and out, I've got a zipper down the back. So uh, what I need to do first is get the shoulder pieces to connect to the shoulder pieces. When I made these large hinge parts, I thought they'd fit inside the profile of the neck, but they can't as they are right now. They're gonna be too wide. So I cut the outside piece in half. Now, this is the part that I'll actually glue to the shoulders and I cut the magnet piece as small as I could. It's about the width of the magnets without actually cutting into them. And I mark where the resized parts are going to fit. I also decided that I wanted a little more room inside of the neck and I added some 10 millimeter thick foam under the brace. Now this little piece lifts the neck and the head assembly up just slightly so it'll be a more comfortable fit. And I can glue the other half on the inside of the neck. I have room. Plus, this will probably be a stronger hinge. You can see how much I removed. The PVC pipe is not cut down yet. And I can now test the fit. Will the neck still attach to the magnets? Yes, it does. The head cast can't tilt his neck back and forth, so I'll just have to wait to see if the movement works. I added to my full-size printout of the smaller toy. The details do not scale up very well, but the overall placement is good. I can mark the underarm bands to go over the chest. And I continue those marks all around the body, adding blue tape to see exactly where the bottom of the band will be placed. I cut a length of six millimeter thick HD foam. I thought this one piece would be what I needed, but I'll need to add about three more layers to really build this band up. That's actually gonna be enough to kind of go all the way around, isn't it? I gotta figure out how big this piece is, specifically. How big is that? Well, I can just cut it out. And that is precisely what I did. Even with the correct size part as a cutout, it was tough to get the correct placement on the chest. But for now, I've got a very good idea, which allows me to start building up the band that goes around the chest. The HD foam is six millimeter thick and about eight centimeters tall. What I need to do is build up the chest and the back to fit the giant neck of Mechagodzilla. Not only do I have to build up the human-sized chest so it can fit the kaiju's neck, I need to make space for a trapdoor on the chest because it opens up to allow an energy beam to fire from Mechagodzilla. Now I have plans to make the chest open and I have a light effect to go inside, so I'm gonna need some space for that to fit. I also need to make the back thicker, building that up as well to fit the kaiju neck. And I need to allow space for the zipper to work. The zipper will get hidden behind the spines in the back when the chest is all finished up. I start measuring the neck to make the collar. There's no better way to describe it. The collar will be made from many layers of foam. It needs to hide the neck hinges and not look like the neck can come off. There is a layer that just goes all the way around the base of the neck. And then there's a little piece that fits inside. It pokes up nearly to the big panel line that's on the side of the neck. And I have a big piece that comes from the back, over the shoulder, and connects to the collarbone. And then another piece that finishes off the chest, adds more to the shoulder, and then connects around to the back. And these are all cut out from six millimeter thick HD foam. I have the lower half of the energy beam compartment already made. It'll glue on right under the chest band. Now this compartment was made by layering many pieces of foam together. The base is the outline or profile of the compartment. It's how wide and how tall it's going to be. I glue in a strip of 4mm foam on each side of the opening. And then I add a second layer of 6mm foam, leaving some of the 4mm exposed 
to hold the trap door when it gets made. The final layer of 6mm foam has a 45 degree angle cut on the outside edges. The angled edges are glued down first, all the way around the compartment. And then the inside is glued down to match the opening. By wrapping the top panel over the built up portion, this gets me the rounded edges that the energy beam compartment actually needs. And I can use my rotary tool to clean up the glue seam and smooth out the rounded corners. And then I can glue it onto the chest, covering over all the random edges from the chest panels. And it has the stops for the trap door already built in. Yeah, yeah, good. It is often with any build, whether it's a big multi-piece or a single prop, that there's one basic major detail that I'm worried about making sure that I get right, or at least right enough that it doesn't bug me. Because if that one part is off, that's all I'm gonna see, and that's what's gonna bug me about the prop for as long as I have it. The door here, his chest door, the, the pot-bellied stove door that goes in the front. This was the part that I was most worried about for whatever reason. This was the thing that I really didn't want to get horribly wrong. And I don't think I did. I don't have the rivets on, it's not painted. That's gonna be the real telltale that, okay, yeah, that's right. But to look at it right now, the basic shape, no, I think that's pretty right. I'm very happy with this. And I've got enough space inside that I should be able to put in a future video, not later than this one, a battery operated plasma device to represent the lightning bolt attack that comes out of this chest. So uh, I'll save this for a future video. This will be happening, but uh, I'm really glad this worked out. There's a little detail panel that slips behind the door frame and over the collarbone. So I stuck these parts together with wet contact cement. You don't want to do that, not really. Contact cement doesn't stick until it's dry and then it sticks on contact, hence the name, right? Putting it together wet is just going to take a lot longer to dry. It'll still dry. It's just going to take much longer than it should. But there's no way I could put this part in place behind this piece and in front of this piece unless the glue was wet because it wouldn't slide. It would stick on contact and nothing would move. Typically, I would put paper in place to help place it. I think this is too tight even for that, and that would still be a challenge. So instead, I'm gonna put it in wet, I'm gonna give it an extra amount of time to dry, and then the corners that aren't touching, I'll stick them down then. But for right now, it's in the right place. Now I need to cut a little circle that goes in the front here. I stacked two circles together, one smaller than the other. So when I press the stack to the chest, the circle can be rounded and bulge a little. I mean, it's dimensional, so it's not just a flat disc. I make a cardboard template for the arc panels that go on the chest. And these are cut from four millimeter thick foam and glued in place. The next big part to make is the shoulders. The top of each shoulder is cut from four millimeter foam and the end of each panel is glued together. Then I pinch the seams to make a peak on each one and the four millimeter top gets glued to a six millimeter arc that actually fits over my shoulder. Gluing the shoulder to the shoulder of the chest is not a perfect fit, but what's funny to me is that if you look at the suit that's in the movie, they had a very similar issue with their shoulder. So I'm okay with a slightly warped fit because it's pretty much screen accurate. There's a small strip that fits over the gap between the chest and the shoulder, and I'm gluing in a strip of four millimeter foam for my suit. I had mentioned that the undersuit was cut longer than I needed, and now that I have the energy beam compartment in place, I can trim the excess off. I know that the undersuit was really a lot longer than it needed to be, but it's really nice to know that I had that extra that was gonna be easy to cut off to make it the right size. There was no concern over, do I need to add anything? I add a couple of drops of super glue to the ends of the zipper that I just cut, because I don't want the metal pull to just come right off. And here you can see how I built the back up. And to be honest, I think both the back and the chest could have been a little thicker, I think, but I'm not starting over on that now and I add more structure to the lower back to build it up. And I cut some new panels of four millimeter what the foam to wrap over them so that the back continues its slope and doesn't just stop part way. And these aren't really new panels. <laughs> they are part of the leftover that I cut off from the undersuit. 
and then I cut out another strip of 4mm foam. This one is 1 inch wide and it is the full length of the brand new roll. The bottom edge of the chest piece needs a riveted strip that goes all the way around it. And I cut two short strips that fit under the arms, not just to cover the seam of the layers. The movie suit actually has a pair there as well. And I add one more layer of foam to the back of the chest band to make it a little thicker like the front half. Most of the materials I use for this project I picked up locally. I put a list in the description. So trust me, I'm a little disappointed too that I didn't get the full chest finished. I really wanted this to be silver and have rivets and have the trap door and have some spines in the back and call it done and be moving on to the next bit. I'm really enjoying that I do get a tilt out of the head, which is what I wanted. The hinge piece is working. And another big, huge plus that I've got going on is that inside my head is not supporting Mecha Godzilla's head at all, which is really, really good. All of the weight from all of this headpiece is totally on my shoulders. I'm not gonna have any neck pain, and that is a good thing. And I've got plans for how I want to make improvements to the parts that I've already got done for little future videos. But immediately, next week, as soon as I get done with this, I just said this last week too, I'm gonna go right into part two of finishing the vest. I'm gonna get a upper chest that is properly painted, finished, have rivets, has spines, has the trap door put in place, even the uh, energy effect I'm not gonna worry about for next week, but it's gonna happen. And after that, well, I'm gonna take a couple weeks break. I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna force you guys to sit through four full weeks of Mechagodzilla. I think three weeks in a row is, is, is pretty big. I did that once before with the Tesseract and with the Tesseract containment unit. This is kind of the same type of build where it's three weeks in a row of the same thing. So I'll do a couple of weeks of something else, but first week of February, second week of February, I'm gonna make the arms. And I'm gonna get the arms made for Mechagodzilla. So everything from the waist up will be basically finished and I can move on to fixing a couple of things and then I'll start worrying about the legs and the tail because I'm gonna make an entire Mechagodzilla suit. I'm gonna stomp around at a con and it's gonna be a lot of fun and I hope to see you there. And it's gonna be all made out of EVA foam because I know there's gonna be lots of different ways that you can make a mechanical kaiju suit. But this is how Odin makes. Before I put these shoulder pieces on, it was very easy to just grab it and, and pull it straight up and pull it off. But now that they're on, it's this like, I feel like I'm wearing a straight jacket. <laughs> It'll come off. Ah, my shirt's coming untucked. <laughs> ah! <laughs> there. Well, I wanted something that was uh, going to hold itself together. I think this is going to be just fine. I want to thank Michael Wojcik, Danny Domingo Jr., and all of my Patreon supporters. My Patreon support is the number one thing that makes this show possible. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe. Have an idea for something for me to make? Please leave a comment below. And if you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture. <laughs>